How is it going everybody? You're watching the Naval Tech and today I'm going to show you the most important settings you need to change in iOS 18. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's open up our settings and then scroll a bit down, get to battery, let it load and then tap here on last 10 days. On yours, it'll probably be last 10 days. And then if we scroll down just a bit, we will see this list which says battery usage by app. What this is, is pretty much a rank that shows you which apps drains your battery the most. And generally it means those are the apps you use the most, but not necessarily. Because if we tap here on show activity, you will see how many hours those apps are on screen and how many hours they are in the background. Of course, in this case, in the previous 10 days. So if you have some apps here that are a ton of hours in the background, especially the ones on top, it means those apps are draining your battery a lot when you're not even using them. So as you can see right here, for example, WhatsApp Business, it is eight hours and 29 minutes in the background. Using my battery, over eight hours in the background. So I'm not even using it sometimes. So even if my iPhone is turned off, for example, or when I'm using another app, it's using and draining my battery in the background. So this is a very important deal and the setting I want you to change, especially for those specific apps, like for example, Threads, which is another social media. So you can go ahead and come back and then search for background app refresh. So back, ground as you can see background app refresh so then it's going to show up a list of all your applications and by default if you have it turned on or wi-fi only everything will be turned on as you can see so you can go ahead and scroll down let's go ahead and take a look at threads which is going to be right here threads so i can go ahead and disable it so i don't have activity being loaded in the background for this application. Don't worry about notifications. This has nothing to do with notifications. So you can disable background app refresh and you'll continue getting notifications. What this will do is just cut any activities, any downloads, any loading, any tracking, absolutely anything in the background while you're not using the app. So we super recommend that you go ahead and take a look at that previous list, go ahead here and disable the ones that are using a ton of your battery in the background. Coming back to our first settings page, if we actually scroll down and get your camera, we have a few very interesting settings to adjust here. If we scroll down just a bit and tap on formats, you see that the standard photo capture resolution is 24 megapixels. And for many newer iPhone models, we have 48 as the maximum megapixel capacity. So how can I actually get 48 megapixels? Super easy. All you have to do is enable Pro Raw and Resolution Control, as you can see right here, and then tap on Pro Default, as you can see, and then you can choose between AGIF Max, which will give you 48 megapixels, or Pro Raw Max. Of course, Pro Raw Max is gonna be huge. So it's going to create huge photo files when you take them. But if you want full maximum resolution, that's your option. If you want 48 megapixels, but not necessarily the maximum possible and you want to save storage, this is a great possibility. Coming back to format and then coming back to camera, we have a very important setting, which is preserve settings. As you can see right here, by default, it'll be turned off. What this means is your camera settings will not be preserved. For example, your camera mode, by default, it will open up always as photo. So when you go ahead and open up your camera, by default, it'll always be photo, right? But if you go ahead here and you tap on preserve settings for your camera, and the last time you use your camera, you are in video, for example, when you exit and then you come back, it'll be in video, it'll preserve that setting. And you can do the exact same thing for everything, for all your controls, photographic styles, creative controls, depth, macro, exposure, night mode, and everything like that. So if you always like to take some specific kind of photos, this is a nice way to preserve your favorite settings. And last but not least here in our camera settings, if we scroll a bit down, we get here to portraits in photo mode. I do recommend that you enable that because what this allows you to do is actually take a photo of a person, a pet, any kind of subject and your iPhone will recognize that 
automatically, okay? And then you'll be able to actually add or remove the blur, the portrait effect, afterwards. So after you take the photo, you can choose if you want the background blown out or not. Coming back to the very first page of our settings, and we're going to be doing that quite a few times in this video, let's tap on search once again and go for photos. As you can see, tap on it and then scroll down, and this is very important, use Face ID, enable this feature. What this will do is actually Face ID lock your hidden and your recently deleted albums. So when you are in your photo gallery and you wanna see your recently deleted, so your trash, right? In your hidden photos, it'll ask for Face ID. This is a very important security feature. And also, by default, this very same hidden album that we're talking about is enabled, is visible on your photo gallery. And if it's a hidden album, we don't want it visible, right? So my recommendation is, where you see show hidden album, disable it. So then your hidden album will be really, really hidden and no one will even be able to find it. Coming back to our settings, let's scroll down, quite a bit down, until we get to privacy and security. And then let's take a look at photos once again and let's tap on it. And here we have a list of apps that actually have access to our photos. Some of them have full access, some of them just a few photos, some of them just a few albums, as you can see. And right off the bat, you can definitely tell that a lot of those apps right here that you have on your iPhone don't really need to have access to your full photo gallery. And this is a privacy thing, okay? So you can simply go ahead, for example, on Airbnb, tap on it, and then none. I don't want Airbnb to have access to my photos. So you can do that for every single app right here, especially for social media, and especially for some social media apps that we don't really know how they deal with privacy, that privacy is really an issue, like TikTok, for example. I don't want TikTok having access to all of my photos. If I need to post something on TikTok, I can give limited access and then just limit the access to one or two videos. If you don't post on TikTok at all, just tap on none, and of course, go ahead here and take a look at your full list. Now, coming back here to our privacy and security, and scroll down, you can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down quite a bit until you get to analytics and improvements. If you have everything or most of those options turned on like you see on mine, it means that Apple actually have access to your iPhone data, a lot of your iPhone data, metrics, and what you're doing on your iPhone. It's actually a little bit scary even. So my recommendation is, disable those features. Just go ahead and okay, disable that, disable that, disable that, because what we're doing here is just sharing our information, sharing our iPhone, our tasks to Apple, and let them actually improve and analyze their devices with other data, but not with mine. Again, here in our settings, let's go to search and then look for autofill. Let me see if I can get it, autofill and passwords. That's it, auto view and passwords. That's how it's gonna look like. As you probably know, now in iOS 18, we have a dedicated app for our passwords. And it gets even better than that because now in iOS 18, we can actually choose other services as well to combine all of that data and then give you suggestions and fill in your password. So if you use the Apple password manager, so iCloud Keychain, right? Uh, you're gonna have it like that, like mine, enabled for passwords. But if you use Google, for example, to store your passwords, you also have it right here and you can enable it as well. I don't enable it because I don't have anything stored on my Google passwords, but if I did, I could enable it right here. So then it would be everything completely integrated in your iPhone passwords manager. So this is very nice. And on top of that, you know those annoying verification codes that we generally need to get in order to log in to websites and apps and so on. Yep, we have this possibility now that we can delete after use and I recommend you to enable it as you can see. So then uh, every time you receive a verification code and you go ahead and autofill it, right? You tap on it and then it's gonna autofill. Afterwards, it's gonna automatically delete. If we open up our notes app and take a look at our cursor, as you can see, it blinks, right? Every cursor blinks. So if you're in the notes app, in Safari, in the messages app, 
it's always gonna blink but if you don't like that for some reason you can open up your settings you can search for blink as you can see and it's in the accessibility option as you can see and then you can enable prefer non-blinking cursor so that's pretty cool and now it's not gonna blink it's gonna be fixed non-blinking and if you like that well you can do it let's go ahead and come back to our settings once again let's come back here to the very first page and cancel and come back and if you actually tap here on the top banner where you see apple account and your name and then let it load and then you go ahead and tap on icloud and if you are an icloud plus subscriber so if you pay apple to get more storage you have this feature called private relay that most people don't really know they have access to so what this will do is kind of like a vpn so it'll actually hide your ip address therefore hide you in your location so if you have private relay enabled and you tap here on IP address location you have two possibilities you can maintain your general location or use country and time zone if you use the first option it means that no one will actually know exactly where you are and know gen the general location of where you are like your city maybe a big radius on your neighborhood which is good if you want to still get recommendations and local news right Right? but if you want to be more private you can go for use country and time zone so uh, if somebody wants to track you they'll just know you are actually in Brazil which is the country I mean right now so it know my time zone in my big general location but they won't even know which city or state I'm in so this is a very nice option please keep in mind that unlike a VPN you won't be able to choose your country so choose your location not like that you just have the possibility to be more anonymous in our settings if we search for airdrop and then tap on it right here we have a very important setting which is bringing devices together which by default is turned on and even though this is not a security issue a lot of people think that airdrop is unsafe simply because if they bring the two iPhones together like that uh, they're gonna communicate right as you can see right here but there's no security issue here no problem at all regarding security no one will ever be able to get any information from you just by simply getting another iPhone close to you okay so don't worry about that but I personally recommend you to disable this feature simply because sometimes it's annoying. Sometimes you have two iPhones close together, you have two iPhones in your hand, you're carrying somebody else's iPhone, and it's constantly thinking that you want to transfer something. So I recommend you to disable it. If we scroll down just a bit until we get to accessibility and then scroll all the way down until we get to Siri, there are some very cool settings that I want to show you first Siri pause time what does this actually mean so this will actually dictate how long Siri will wait after you stop giving the command to actually reply back so if you like giving short rapid fast commands you can go ahead and set to default Siri will be faster it will actually reply back to you faster but if you take your time so if you give a command and then sometimes you wait a little bit and then you compliment with something else and then you wait and then you want to say something or you just are a slow speaker for some reason you can set to longest so then Siri will actually pause and wait and wait and wait before giving you your reply so you can choose here how fast you want Siri to reply back to you this is pretty important again we have here speaking rate as well which is pretty cool uh, if we scroll down a bit we have always listen for Siri I generally disable this feature simply because I don't like my iPhone constantly having the microphone on waiting for my command waiting for me to say Siri and always listening 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 and this is a battery drainer and a privacy concern as well so I don't like this possibility especially because I don't really use Siri all that often and I know most people don't 
either. On top of that, we have require Siri for interruptions. So let's say you are giving a command, okay? So you say something, you ask for something, and then Siri is replying back to you, okay? When this feature is available, the only way to interrupt Siri is if you say the word Siri. Otherwise, it'll continue giving you the reply. If you disable this feature and Siri is replying something back, giving you information, you can say anything and then Siri will stop. It will interrupt Siri. So this is a very nice option. And on top of that, if you scroll all the way down, we have call hang up. And if you like that, you can enable. So if you're talking to someone on the phone and you say, Siri, hang up, right? As you can see right here, hey Siri, hang up. Siri will actually, whoop, <laughs> I have enabled it. So uh, Siri will actually turn off the phone call. It actually end the phone call. So then this is a possibility if you want to, if you really want Siri to be like your assistant, even during phone calls. Now let's talk about cellular. So if you tap on it, and then we actually scroll down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling until we get to Wi-Fi Assist. Let's talk about that feature. What this means, and not everyone knows, is when you have this possibility, this feature enabled, it means that if you have a bad Wi-Fi, low quality, slow Wi-Fi, just bad Wi-Fi, and you have 4G or 5G and get good cellular data, it'll actually help Wi-Fi. So then if you're watching a video on YouTube, for example, Wi-Fi is bad, the video is dropping quality or maybe stopping, um, your iPhone will automatically use your 4G or 5G, so your cellular, to help with the connection and keep you connected and using and consuming whatever you are consuming. Please keep in mind that this feature may be tricky. So if you have a bad Wi-Fi, so if your Wi-Fi is always slow, there is a risk that your 5G will be always kicking in, always, 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 and then, of course, it'll be using your data plan. So consider this option. Since my Wi-Fi is pretty good, pretty stable, I leave it on. As you can see, it's just using 13 megabytes of my 5G on this feature, but keep in mind that maybe for you, you may wanna disable it. Now let's come back to our Apple account and then let it load, and then let's tap on subscriptions let it load once again. And right here on subscriptions, let me actually help you save some cash. Because it's so, so common that we have a ton of subscriptions active on our iPhone, on our devices, services that we use, and sometimes you just forget about them and we're paying and we forget. So what I do recommend is you actually take a look at the active list and see if everything that you're actually paying, you're actually using. Because if you're not, just tap on it and then cancel the subscription. Please keep in mind that if you cancel it right now and you are, for example, in the middle of the period, you still have access to the service until the period ends. So you're not wasting any money. So if you have already paid for a full month and you are in the middle of the month, then you will still have 15 days, so the, the remaining part of the month with full access to your service. If we tap on search and look for App Store, and as you can see here, uh, where is it? <laughs> yeah, the new settings in iOS 18 is a bit of a mess. So as you can see, App Store, and if you actually scroll down and keep scrolling, we have this option, which is in-app ratings and reviews. If you disable that, it means that you will never ever get those annoying pop-ups asking you, are you enjoying your app? Is this a good app? Please rate our app. So those pop-ups asking you to constantly review some app or all your apps, they will be gone. And last but not least, once again, let's go to search and let's look for iMessage. As you can see, iMessage right here. And then if we actually scroll quite a bit down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, you will see here this option, which is low quality image mode. By default, it's turned off. And that's why generally when we send a photo or a video via messages, via iMessage, that's why it takes so long. When you compare to sending a photo or video through WhatsApp, for example, that you send, and then automatically you get the tick, right? Meaning it has sent. On iMessage, it takes a while, it's loading and loading and loading, and that's why, because by default, 
iMessage will always send full quality photos and video. So if you go ahead and enable this option, you will enable low quality image mode, meaning you'll send photos just like WhatsApp with reduced quality, smaller files, and therefore faster sends, all right? So that's literally it, guys. That's my list of the most important settings you need to change right now in iOS 18. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.